Hello everyone, and welcome to Colonial Sports Update. I'm Prashant, along with my co-host Ryan. Ahead on today's program, highlights of some boys basketball and hockey action, a look back at DCL champion winter track team, and a visit to the coach's corner. But, but before we get to all that, what's up first, Ryan? The Acton Box World boys varsity basketball team had another highly successful season including capturing its second consecutive dual county league championship. The Colonials were led by senior captains Wes Schroll and Sam Longwell. For a look back at another memorable season, here's Brett Olson. Yes. Just like that, 2 nothing. The Acton Boxborough boys varsity basketball team put together a great season with several exciting victories. The Colonials are led by two senior captains, Sam Longwell and Wes Schroll. We spoke to Longwell about the way the team is coached. Since my underclassman years, Coach K has really helped me and the team develop as a, uh, as a good squad. He gives them a list of goals they should try to achieve in the off season, and most kids get the job done and achieve them. And when all that happens, it when the season starts, it comes together as a really good team because everyone's accomplished their individual goals. And then, as far as the team goes, he never he never stops pushing, which is a good thing because at the end of seasons, you could go into a lull or you know like start not treating every game like it's like it's a big game. And uh, coach doesn't really let that happen, so it really helps us as a team keep playing hard and you know win win some big games down the down the stretch of the season. So. The intense practicing and the desire instilled by Coach Kilpatrick seem to have paid off, with the Colonials earning a playoff berth. We talked to varsity captain Sam Longwell. Now we'll discuss the season with Coach Kilpatrick. I thought that. Um, the 2010-2011 season was really gratifying. The guys worked extremely hard. This was a, a team that showed up every day to practice ready and, and uh, were very self-motivated. One of the things we really try and focus on is to just get you know, a little bit better each day and each week and each month during the season. And, and we always tell the guys you want to play your best basketball in February. And I really thought they did that. I thought that you know they took steps along the way. Um, they won a lot of games in all three months, but I really felt like they peaked in February, which is what we're trying to do. And overall, I, I don't think you could say the season was anything but successful. Although the season ended abruptly, the Colonials seemed prepared for success. Coach Kilpatrick seemed pleased about his team's performance and is optimistic for the future of AB basketball. Congratulations to the team on a truly memorable season. The Colonials will have their work cut out for them next year, having to re replace some talented seniors, but we wish them the best of luck. Next up, let's head to the ice for some AB boys hockey highlights. Here with all the action is Brett Olson. Paul Moy scored early, giving the Colonials a 1-0 lead. After some nice passes by the Colonials, Colin Goulet knocks in the second goal of the game. Junior Tyler McHealthy scored another eight, widening the lead. This goal gave AB a 3 0 lead at the end of the first period. After stealing the puck from Medford, Peter Sakalis goes down to take a five points of the point, giving AB a 4 0 lead. Followed by a Mike Berkeley goal, he has the Colonials a 5 0 lead at the end of the second period. The Colonials earn a much needed victory, giving them a secure berth in the playoffs. Colonials went on to qualify for the state tournament before bowing out in the first round to a tough St. John's team. Congratulations to the squad, though, on a solid season. A big part of the hockey team's success this season was due to the outstanding goaltending of Andrew Lablundo. 
Recently, I had a chance to sit down and talk to Andrew as part of this player profile. Hello, everybody. I'm alongside with Andrew Lablendo. Today, we're going to take a we're going to have a player profile of him. I love him. First and foremost, Andrew, it's safe to say we're all wondering how the team is going to look this year. We understand that last year's team fell a little short of making the playoffs, but how does this year's team compare? Well, I think this year we're going to have a very good team. We didn't lose too many seniors last year, and uh, we have a lot of good juniors and seniors this year, and our goaltending is going to really keep us in most games. Nice. From a personal standpoint, tell us a little bit about yourself and your position and your role on the team. Well, first of all, my main role on the team last year was to be on man up and have get the shot on man up. But this year, I'm hoping to move my game more to an, a defensive point of view and score more goals. Nice. Is lacrosse a sport you've been playing for a while? Like, when did you first start playing? I first started playing in sixth grade. And since then, I've been playing every year and a lot of lacrosse. So I like lacrosse, and it's a fun sport to play. Nice. Do you have any individual goals for this year? Like you said, we fell short of playoffs by one game last year, and we lost by one goal to Concord. So my main goal this year is to make playoffs and hopefully go pretty far into the, into the tournament. Nice. Um, take us through your off season and your preparation for the season. Well, to start off, over the summer, I play a lot of lacrosse. I play with my friends and all that. I work out, lift weights, run. And then for the winter season, I actually play hockey, so there's not a lot of lacrosse I can do. Um, but I still get the endurance, I still get the working out. And uh, right before the season starts, I usually play indoor lacrosse with a bunch of the uh, varsity team players. Is that a team that you, is that, is that a lot of fun for you, I'm assuming? Yeah. yeah, it's a fun team to play for, and you get to play lacrosse and work on the skills. Kind of builds your like team chemistry. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, what would you say are the keys to success this year for your team? First of all, we just have to be smart, not get in any trouble off the field, so we can all be eligible to play. And then also we have to just work hard, come prepared to every game, and uh, put the ball in the net. Yep, definitely. I can t definitely see where you're coming from. Um, is there any particular things that you need to focus on more this year that you didn't last year, maybe to, you know, push to make the playoffs this year? Uh, probably passing and catching. Yeah. Definitely, because a lot of the time we drop the ball and we lose the offensive push and we go on to defense and we'll sometimes let up a goal. So. Uh -huh. And then ground balls. We have to pick the ball off the ground a lot. Much better because we're losing the one-on-one -on -one battles with the other team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know in many sports, uh, ball movement is definitely a key to success. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's the same for lacrosse. Yep. Um, is there anything with the sport that motivates you or makes you want to play it more? Any uh, people or anything? Mainly college lacrosse. The NCAA tournament, lacrosse tournament, is a big motivation because it's amazing to watch and the players just put so much time and effort into that uh, tournament. And Outside of AB, are there any specific teams you play on? Mm, no, I mostly play indoor right before the season and then I go right to the, the team when it's time to, uh, for tryouts. Yep. Uh, do you see yourself playing at the next level, maybe? I would like to play at the next level, but I don't know. I don't know if I'm ready or good enough to play at the next level yet, so we'll see. Um, throughout your life, what has been your most memorable experience with lacrosse? Um, probably last year, I was playing a lot of JV lacrosse. I Tried out for varsity, was on the team for the first scrimmages, and then got moved back down. And then halfway through the year, I got moved back up. And the first game I played in, I had one of the, one of the goals to uh, win the game. So that was pretty exciting. Nice. So would you say being moved up halfway through the year, is that something that you just kind of fulfilled your role and fit in with everyone? Yeah. I, I really uh, picked up my game and started playing to the varsity potential. And that's, that really helped out the team when I got pulled up. Um, from like a coaching staff, is there anything that they kind of emphasize towards you guys? Uh, don't take any stupid shots because yeah. when we throw the ball at the net and it's not a hard shot or it's badly positioned, 
it's a turnover and we have to go back on defense and we're wasting uh, a shot on net pretty much. Um, are there any teams you guys are looking out for this year in the, in the DCL? Bill Ricca. Bill Ricca is a very good team this year. Uh, LS is always a good team. And uh, BC High is another one of those top teams in our league. So uh -huh. those should be some good games. So you guys, see you guys got some non-league non games? Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. We definitely play a couple non-league games. That's good. Um, well, that's about it for today. Uh, thanks for being on, Andrew. We appreciate yep. it. Um, we're looking forward to following the season, and uh, good luck. Thank you. Thanks to Andrew for that interview, and we wish him the best of luck during the upcoming lacrosse season. Now on to the hardwood and some hoop highlights. Earlier in this show, we highlighted the boys basketball team's DCL championship season. Now with a look back at two of their most important wins of the year, here's Brian Phelan and Elliot Gilfrey's. The Acton Boxboro boys varsity basketball team recently traveled to Westford to take on the Grey Ghosts. Cornelius is going to start this one off. Cornelius wins it. Colonial Joey Flanner steals the ball, then runs down the court to give it to West Shore for a layup. AB comes away with it. Joey Flanner, great pass. West Shore and one. Wow, and one. Colonial Sam Longwa drives to the basket, and even though he's fouled, he's still able to make an acrobatic layup. Longwell. What a take to the basket. The Grey Ghost, though, kept fighting, led by their senior captain, Mark Cornelius. Cornelius and one. Colonial Sam Longwell gets his own rebound and makes a three to end the first half. Got it! Oh, yeah. Got it three. Colonial Dana Flood makes a nice steal and then gives it to Joey Flanner, who converts on a layup. Kevin LaFrancis takes a key charge, which would change the momentum in the game. Oh, charge, Evan, LaFrancis! A.B., Sam Longwa had a great game, driving through the entire Westford defense to make a key lay. Beautiful move, hanging in the air. A.B., coming out with the victory. With a final score of 74 to 66. A.B. versus Andover, and Francis steals it for A.B. But Andover's Sam Dowden gets the first points. LaFrancis fights back. And here's Wes Schroll. Sam Dowden again. Wes Schroll fights back again. Incredible play by Dana Flood. Wes Schroll again. Here comes Flannery. Here he is again. An amazing three-pointer for A.B. A.B. leads by 13. And Joey Flannery, number 32. An amazing play by Joe Bermonti for Andover. A basket by LaFrancis. An incredible slam dunk by Joe Vermont for Andover. LaFrancis is knocked to the ground. Another basket for Andover. Devin Santilli. A basket by LaFrancis. An amazing basket for Andover. Brian Salveson. Three pointer by Dana Flood. What a play by Wes Schroll. Wes Schroll again. A.B. wins 68-54. to 54. Thanks for those highlights, Elliot. After that exciting home playoff win over Andover, the Colonials would drop their next game to Lynn English, finishing the season with an impressive 20-4 record. The boys' basketball team wasn't the only winter squad to capture a league title. The boys' track team also had an incredible winter campaign, including a DCL title of their own. Here with the story is Brian Fallon. 
The Acton Boxboro winter track teams have always been a perennial force in the DCL conference, but this year they took it to a whole new level. Me, Brian Fallon, and Blaze Bookis take a look into this year's Acton Boxboro winter track. So the uh, winter track season was phenomenal this year. Kids peaked at the right time, both guys and girls. Um, everybody did well, certainly the guys did a little bit better. The hardest meets were primarily in our heads. Uh, Coach Crossman and has a very good way of kind of building up the anticipation that things are going to be close, it's going to be to the line. Really the only big challenge was perhaps moving into um, the All-State meets uh, in the Division I meet where we knew that we would be, it's, you know, everything changes when you get into a big competition like that with so many more teams coming at you, um, but we did very well there as well. The Acton Boxborough Boys Winter Varsity Track Team had a very successful season this year, breaking many records and setting personal bests. We spoke to Brian Summers, who gave us some insight on this great season. I think the meet was uh, a lot of fun. There was a ton of uh, publicity. There was college coaches all around. So it was obviously very uh, nerve-wracking, but at the same time, it was a good experience. You get to uh, experience a lot of competition and uh, you know, even meet some new kids from around the, around the area or around New England. The Acton Boxborough Colonials were successfully able to capture the dual county league title by defeating their longtime rival, Newton South. The Acton Boxburg Colonials track team is already beginning to get ready for the future spring track season. Although the track isn't in pristine condition, the Acton Boxborough track team will be out there practicing daily to stay on top of the DCL. Overall, it was truly a special year for the AB 2010-2011 winter track team, especially for the 4x800 boys relay team who won the DCL, States, New Englands, and recently won to Nationals. We wish them the best of luck. seasons by both the boys and girls track teams and I know coaches Crossman and Goldner are optimistic that the spring outdoor track teams can do just as well. We wish them the best of luck. The days are getting longer, the sun is shining brighter and baseballs are flying through the air. That must mean spring is here and with that the AB baseball team is about to embark on what they hope will be another highly successful season. Here with the story is Elliot Gilfix. With spring right around the corner, the Acton Boxborough baseball team is looking for another highly successful season. After being eliminated from the playoffs in the first round last year, the Acton Boxborough baseball team is looking to rebound this season. And to do so, the players have been training very hard. And during the season, the team will be returning seven players from last year. However, Five key players from last year have been lost. This means that the new players will have to step up and fulfill their roles. Last year, we, you know, after a very successful regular season, we just had a tough draw. Um, you know, we need to make sure we focus on playing a complete game and really sort of stringing um, good things together. You know, the, the whole philosophy this year is going to be 42 outs. You know, they get 21 outs, we get 21 outs in a, in a high school baseball game. And, you know, if things are going well, you know, we're going to try to utilize all of our outs on offense to, to produce as much as we can, take a mindset that we're, we're in it for the entire game and we're not going to let one bad play or one bad thing sort of derail uh, what we're about and what we're doing. Developing. As Coach Grisell has said, you got to hit the ball. you got to hit it, you know? It's all about developing, developing, developing. This year, we're really going to focus on, you know, finishing those seven strong, not cutting it short. Cutting corners is bad. Words of gross. The team will be playing this year based on four important values. These are speed, skill, stamina, and strength. We have um, more guys returning this year with more varsity innings pitching. My goal every year is that you know we are a better team on June 1st than we are on March 21st. It's safe to say that the Action Box for our baseball team will have a great season. We wish them luck and we will be following them throughout the season. Best of luck to Coach Grusella and the baseball team on the season ahead. In fact, we send out best wishes to all the spring teams as tryouts began this week.
This winter was, a, was highly unique in that two AB teams had a chance to play at the famed Boston Garden. One of them was the girls basketball team led by first year coach Kim Landry. The Lady Colonials advanced to the Division I North sectional finals where it was defeated by the eventual state champions from Andover. But regardless, it was a great run. And recently, our own Brett Olson had a chance to sit down and meet Coach Landry in this edition of Coach's Corner. Hi, I'm Brett Olson, and in today's Coach's Corner, we have a chance to sit down with the varsity girls basketball coach, Miss Landry. Welcome to the show, Miss Landry. Thank you, Brett. Um, to start, you're a new coach at AB this season, so how did you get interested in coaching? Well, I was interested in coaching after graduating from college and playing. Um, I knew I wanted to stay involved with the sport of basketball, and I knew I wanted to be a high school teacher and a high school coach, and um, I was lucky enough to get an opportunity to coach early on, and mm -hmm. I just love it, and, I, and I've been really excited about this opportunity. Okay, so you've had previous coaching experience prior to AB. I have, I have. I was an, um, an assistant coach at Fitchburg State okay. with the women's team for a year, and then I was a varsity coach at St. Bernard's High School mm -hmm. in Fitchburg for 11 years okay. prior to coaching at AB. So you said you played in college. Um, how has your uh, player experience impacted the way you coach basketball? I think I've been very lucky to have played for very good coaches, all with different coaching styles. Mm -hmm. And that has given me an opportunity to sort of pick and, and take certain things from each of the coaches and what they did. Um, and I was able to play for coaches who were great teachers of the game. Um, mm -hmm. So I feel very grateful for that. Um, over the course of the season, your team's played better and better. They've played real sub team basketball. Yeah. And uh, how, how do you think your team has grown over the course of this year? I think for any team, it's always a challenge when a new coach comes in. And, you know, and, you know Coach Gallant did a great job with the program. And, you know, to step in and fill in those shoes was a great opportunity mm -hmm. um, for me as a coach. And I think the players did a great job adjusting to a slightly different style of play and um, really worked hard. And they worked hard and they bought into the system and what we were trying to do. Um, and, and, you know, I'm really proud of the growth over the season and how they've really grown as players and leaders. And I think we have tremendous leadership from our upperclassmen. Mm -hmm. um, we have three great senior captains, Hannah Foley, Lily Barnard, and Mary Murphy. Okay. Um, and our, our seniors and juniors it really kind of brought everyone along and, and set the tone for our team. Okay. So how do you think your team is prepared to uh, transfer into the next few years with um those seniors and juniors leading? You know, I think that part of a program and to bring your program up to the next, it's that consistency in, in being right. able to be a competitive um, team year in and year out. And, you know, we have five seniors that have been tremendous leaders and a big part of our program this year. Um, and when they graduate, that leaves an opening for some other kids to step up. And, you know, we have some great juniors on the team, I think led by Elizabeth Belanger, mm -hmm. um, who scored her thousandth point. Right. Um, last night so I think that that is you know it, it's nice to know that she'll be back in with that core of juniors and, and we've had a two few sophomores who have been with us on varsity for the year okay. um, Sarah Smith and Rosie Quinn and I think you know another year of experience for those kids you'll see them step up as leaders as well mm -hmm. so the postseason adds a lot of pressure to teams how do you think your team is prepared to handle the pressure of the postseason? I think we're lucky enough to play in a very competitive league and right. play competitive games night in and night out and, um, and be challenged during the regular season. I think mm -hmm. as a coach, it's really important to be challenged uh, every night in, in during your season so that when you get to the postseason, you're prepared um, for that level of play. And, you know, it comes down to playing hard and controlling the things you can control and mm -hmm. working hard and digging in defensively and working on making sure that you're controlling the boards um, and the rebounding. And, and, and that the, the offense comes from there. I think that right. teams that can really defend um, really have a, a chance to do big things come tournament time. Mm -hmm. And you seem to have had a lot of success last night. So, 
yeah, it was, it's always nice to get that first tournament win under right. your belt because when you talk about you know the pressure of the tournament, it's that first game sometimes is the toughest to get over that hump and um, sort of get used to what it means to be playing in the tournament and the type of intensity that's needed. And mm -hmm. um, I was really proud of how we responded. And Bilberg is a very good team, and um, they came ready to work, and we knew they would. So we had to come out um, and be able to set our own intensity level and really work on the defensive end. Okay, so when's the next game? Next game is Saturday, so tomorrow at 1 o'clock okay. in the afternoon. Uh, well, the lady, the AB Lady Colonial seem to be prepared for another long postseason run. Uh, thank you for joining us on the program today. Thank you so much for having me. Stay tuned to Colonial Sports Update for more updates on the Colonial's postseason run. And look, look for more Coach's Corner in the upcoming months. Thanks to Coach Landry for spending some time with us. Congratulations again on an amazing first season. As we mentioned earlier, the girls' basketball squad wasn't the only team to play at the Boston Garden. The girls' ice hockey team also played there, losing the Division I state final to Hingham. But a fantastic season nonetheless, and we send out congratulations to all of the players and coaches. That does it for this edition of Colonial Sports Update. Be sure to tune in in the upcoming week for more programs. I'm Prashant. And I'm Ryan. Thanks for watching, everyone.